let's cover all the key ventilator numbers from alarms, mode, settings, and monitoring. First thing I want to highlight is the pretty blue light here. This tells us a lot of important numbers. Then down here at the bottom is the clear curly stuff, which a lot of lung butter builds up in there. Lastly is the big old round dial here. Always a family favorite. Oh yeah, you turn this sometimes and uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is actually a meme from Facebook and I think it's pretty funny here because half the time no one knows how a ventilator works. They just push it around like a big refrigerator. Okay, let's start the lecture starting with alarms. So we have two types, low pressure and high pressure here. So for low pressure, this is known as a low tidal volume alarm. Just think of the double L's here. It means L, we have a loss of connection resulting in an air leak. Now it's typically caused from a cuff leak that's not tight enough, or ET tube displacement, which is very scary, or just disconnection of the tubes. And high pressure alarm, also called high peaked pressure alarm, just think H for high blockage. Anything that can cause a blockage of airflow resulting in peaked airway pressure. So we must assess first for blockage. Now this is typically from biting a tube, kinks in the tube, excessive airway secretions like a mucus plug, or even coughing, which is probably the most common. And another common one is a client who fights the ventilator, typically when waking up from sedation. Now, some more serious ones are pulmonary edema, that fluid in the lungs, and pneumothorax, that popped lung with trapped air. Click here to check out our brand new app-based NCLEX product, loaded with the highest quality NCLEX style practice questions, and complete with detailed video rationales that break down the question for you. So, finally master all those darn select all that apply questions. Plus, all our NCLEX memberships come included with our entire library of over a thousand videos and study guides and cheat sheets. Come see why over a hundred thousand students have trusted their future to simplenursing.com. Click here to get started for free. This causes more pressure. So really, just anything that causes a blockage of airflow. Now Kaplan mentions, a client with emphysema receiving mechanical ventilation appears restless and agitated. Priority action when a high pressure alarm sounds. Instruct the client to allow the machine to breathe for the client. And a common NCLEX question here. The nurse responding to a high pressure alarm on the ventilator would assess for which condition. So once again, think high pressure, high blockage. So option number one, auscultate the lungs for pulmonary edema. Yes, this is high blockage. Option two, biting the ET tube. Yes, again, another blockage. Now option three and four are incorrect. Tube displacement, guys, that's a low leak here, a leaky air. And number four, disconnection of tubes. Again, we're leaking air, there's no blockage here. And option five and six are correct. Excessive airway secretions can cause blockages, and kinked airway tubing will definitely cause a blockage. Now let's cover modes here. The two ones you have to know is AC and SIMV. So AC is for assist control. This means full machine control over the patient's respiratory rate. So it's 100% machine control, typically used after CPR or even in life support, like long-term care clients. So just think AC is for actively controls breathing. Next is SIMV. This is known as the weaning mode. So the fancy word is synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. Basically, the patient controls breathing mainly and the machine assists. So think of the double S's here. S for SIMV is S for step down. We're basically stepping away from full control and we're doing the weaning. We're allowing the patient to take control of their own respirations here. Next is all the main crazy settings here. So starting with the first one, VT, also known as V4. This is known as tidal volume. Now I know you're probably thinking it should be TV, but no, it's VT. So the description is the volume of air set to be delivered with each breath. 
So every time a patient takes a breath of air, this is the volume they get. So 500 to 800 mLs of air is typically normal in terms of how much air they get. So the memory trick for tidal volume, just think a tidal wave of air. Next is FRR. This is our frequency of respirations. So just the number of breaths per minute. And just like normal, like your normal vital signs, 12 to 20 is the typical setting here. So the memory trick, just think FRR as freaking respiratory rate, man. <laughs> okay, next is FiO2. It's our oxygen concentration, typically between 35 to 100%. So naturally, higher the oxygen percentage, the more severe the patient is. So the memory trick, FiO2, just think FiO2 for feed me O2. Next up is our PEEP, positive and expiratory pressure. So I would really focus on this one because a lot of complications, really the most deadly complications, come from this setting. So it keeps the alveoli open with positive pressure at the end of the respiration. And a huge caution is that barotrauma, which eventually can even lead to a pop lung, that pneumothorax. So the key point is the PEEP improves gas exchange, keeping that alveoli open to push oxygen in and expel CO2 out, especially with ARDS, where fluid fills up that alveoli, which blocks gas exchange. So for the memory trick, think of the double P's. PEEP pushes open that alveoli. And very lastly is the PS. Kind of like when you're writing an email and you leave PS. This is our pressure support. It pushes air to help with spontaneous breathing. So think PS is spontaneous breath support. Just helping the patient breathe when they want to take a spontaneous breath. So a common NCLEX question always revolves around the most deadly complications here. So which complication is associated with excessively high levels of PEEP? And the answer is barotrauma, or even pneumothorax. Remember, a popped lung from too much pressure being pushed into the lungs, or basically this positive pressure from the vent being pushed into the lungs. That's the worst case scenario. Okay, next up is monitoring. We have three types. The VE, the PIP, and the PIMP, I'm just kidding, and the P plat. So first up is the VE. This is for minute ventilation here. It's the amount of air delivered per minute. So the memory trick is VE, ventilations every minute. Next is our PIP here. So peaked inspiratory pressure. This is the max pressure during inspiration. So the memory trick, think PIP is the tip of max pressure. And our last one here is P-plat, our plateau pressure. This is pressure applied to hold open the small airways and alveoli before expiration. It indicates lung compliance. For example, our patients in ARDS who have stiff, hard lungs, the lungs are not compliant, they're stiff and hard. So plateau pressure gently reopens the alveoli by holding it open a little bit longer. So the memory trick, think plateau is a paused lung to hold open the air sacs just a little bit longer. Okay, that wraps it up for ventilators. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, Click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys. See you next time.